87% of realtors that get into the business get out of the business after two years. That does not exist in our world. We have massive visions around growing our businesses, and we are always looking to add talent to our world. We do everything in our power to ensure the people we surround ourselves with defy the odds, get into production, and build massive lives for themselves. We have interviewed some of the top realtors in the world. If you're a new realtor, a top producer, or CEO of a mega team, Sales Beast Podcast is your blueprint for success. With locations all across Canada, reach out to us to talk about partnership and opportunities. We are looking forward to it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Sales Beast Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about what we are learning, where we're getting the content we're learning, and who we are modeling. Awesome. Hey, Anna. How's it going? Good. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah. So I don't know what you've been learning recently, but I uh, I just went to an amazing conference. I was at uh, Glover's Live on Real conference. Mm -hmm. um, he hit it out of the park as usual. For anyone that's never been to one, I highly recommend you go. There's another one, I think, in June or July in Michigan. So I think most of our listeners are from Ontario. Um, short drive, well worth it. And it's cheap. It's 400 bucks jam-packed with value that's amazing yeah he had uh john maxwell there as his keynote and i know in the summer he has ed my lap well similarly like i'm going to family reunion which is the keller williams annual conference next month and ed my going to be there so i'm also looking forward to that um this year my goal is to read my original goal was 50 books i've moved that to mm. 40 40 yeah. books this year um I, I've read three so far um I take in a lot of my learning from like hardcover books which maybe it's not as efficient but I feel like I learn better by actually reading and being able to make notes as I'm going and a lot of people do like the audio audible stuff um doesn't really work for me because I'm like listening to something and then I'll start going on like a train of thought and then <laughs> I end up having to like rewind and start the thing over Whereas for reading, it's uh, I think it's more my style right now. Also, like looking into different things around uh, like scripting. I'm trying to like model after like the best sales scripters, um, not just real estate. So um, there's a couple of people that I've been following to find really good scripts and see how we can incorporate them into our agent business and just negotiations overall. And what else have I been learning? Honestly, just going back to the basics and learning the models of the MRA, we, we're just about to wrap up our MRA book club. So reading The Millionaire Real Estate Agent for probably like the seventh or eighth time. Um, but it's always such a good reminder. I think it's the best book for real estate sales. Nice. Mm -hmm. I'm not reading anything this year. I haven't read a book all year. I did read a book over Christmas. I read Shift by Gary Keller. Classic. Mm -hmm. um, but I have not read one book or listened to a book. You'll be surprised to find out so where are you pulling in more of your content is it if like you're not growing you're dying it sounds like i'm dying but you listen to podcasts so I'm you're kidding. learning you're learning i'm right? kidding i'm modeling i'm modeling i we were fortunate enough to have uh lover actually come down and do our business planning last year and wasn't the first time i've heard it i've heard him say it before but he does this thing he says listen to a monday podcast tuesday podcast wednesday thursday friday and i had never done that before um, I've probably been doing it for about six months. So I have five podcasts. I listen to one on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, one on Friday. All um, different ones. All different. I just have five that okay. I listen to. And I'll rotate them when I get bored to keep things interesting. Cool. But it's been amazing for me. Um, there's no, I will often feel pressure. I can tell you something funny. One of the guys on the team was, uh, asking for book recommendations. So I pulled out my Audible and played the sample. Um, and it was Zoom and it was on like 1.7 speed because that's how I listened to it. Because I, I need the content and I need it now. I'm yeah. running out of time. I'm only going to be on this earth for 100 years maximum. Um, so I listened really quickly. And I find podcasts are so helpful. For that. It's one episode on a specific topic. It gets to the point really quickly. And I just get so much value out of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it all kind of, it's funny how it all works. My podcast I listen to, I do listen to Glover's podcast. I think it's great for anyone that wants some of the best real estate scripts out there. I think he's the guy and he gives them away for free on this podcast. It's pretty sweet. Um, 
then I went to his conference, heard John Maxwell speak. One of the podcasts I've been listening to for the past few months is uh, John Maxwell. Pretty cool to hear him speak live. And then as Maxwell was speaking, they announced that Ed Milet will be doing the Live on Real Summit in the summer. He was already one of the podcasts I was listening to. Um, and then it was announced that Ed Milet will be at Family Reunion. Super pumped for you to hear him speak. I don't know if you listen to his podcast. It's amazing. I actually follow him on Instagram. I kind of listen more to his reels, but I'm going to listen to his podcast. Um, I've been, I, I don't know if you, have you, have you read, or read, have you listened to the Think Like a CEO podcast? Yeah. Yeah. But so, it ended. Yeah, I know. They're, they're Very disappointing. It. They're restarting. Are they? It. Yeah. Okay. I an email nice. yesterday. Think Like a CEO is back. So oh, okay. Gary Keller is amazing. He obviously runs the biggest real estate team in the world, but uh, yeah. What, what was really cool about the that? most consistent podcast i need episodes once a week in order to execute my plan gary what was cool though is like i was reading the mrea and listening to the thing like a ceo podcast at the same time and they like chunk down most of the systems and models within the mrea in such a like digestible format so if anyone's mm -hmm. like really looking to build their real estate business i mean the think like a ceo podcast is amazing for that yeah there's another one. This is probably my favorite podcast that I listen to. Jeff Cohn. He's amazing. The team building <laughs> show. I like that one too. I haven't listened to it since well, like mid last year, but it's really good. Yeah, it's my favorite podcast. I think he's one of the greatest leaders in in real estate, especially for team leaders. So the, Glover the, fame, he's the fastest person to grow from 70 and to 700. And, and I think they do way more than that. He's probably around 2000 at this point. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you mentioned the Glover, the John Maxwell, Jeff Cohn. What other podcasts are you listening to, Mike? Yeah, I that. Oh, yeah. I listen. I just started listening to this one recently, maybe a month or two ago. Uh, John Chapla. Nice. Yeah, that's a good podcast, too, actually. Do you listen to the Tony Robbins one? No, but I have I like that. that one. I like the Tony Robbins one because it's it's very it's not necessarily just business focused. Like they mm. have one of my favorite episodes that he did recently was like the founders of um the Boom Chicka Pop. So he did okay. an episode with the founders of Boom Chicka Pop and how their determination led to like I think they were acquired by 200 like their acquisition was 250 million dollars and they had to pour like 11 years into this business to actually achieve that so that was really cool to hear he also had ray dalio on it too which was dope mm -hmm. yeah tony robbins is awesome we were like, down at this event a few months ago um we need to get to business mastery in august I think there are two tickets up for grabs. Someone we both know has access to, so we need to make sure we secure those. Yes. Let's convince them to give them to us. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. I mean, speaking of Tony Robbins, like one of the biggest things that we talked about is like modeling after people that are successful and breaking bad patterns. So, I mean, if you're listening to this episode and thinking about like, where should we look for content? What should I be learning? I mean, you don't have to take what Mike and I are saying and apply it for yourself, but think about the things that you want to master and find the person that's doing it the best and just model after them, whether they have a podcast or whether they're a coach and you're going to reach out to them for mentorship or it's a book, whatever it is. Um, there's so many different ways to find knowledge, especially nowadays. Um, but it, modeling is the best way to do it. Best way to learn what you need to be learning or the best thing, the way that you can find the, the resources to really master the things that you want to be mastering. Yeah, I think um, one, one thing that really changed my life, it was a book. It was about waking up early in the morning and the system and model you need to put in your life in order to live a productive, happy life each and every day in the morning and one thing I realized about myself I'm not a happy person in the morning when I wake up I'm not a morning person I don't think most people are morning people I wake up super early um so what I do 
is ask myself a question. Mike, you have one of two choices right now. You can listen to your own negativity, which was there yesterday and the day before and the day before that, or you can plug into someone that's gonna provide you with optimism, inspiration, motivation, someone that is where you want to be in your future. Um, say that person is Tony Robbins. How much more beneficial is it to you if when you wake up in the morning, you plug into Tony versus listen to your own negativity? Mm -hmm. That for me has been huge. But that's how you break those like unconscious patterns is like you, you reframe your mind by taking in other content, other knowledge, rather than what you're telling yourself in your own internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. That's modeling is like, you're, you're just changing your mindset, changing the frame of how you think and establishing a new pattern. Yeah. It's interesting. At this point in my life, I almost think none of my thoughts are truly real. Um, I had a moment in my real estate career early on and say week one, the world was crashing. Deals were falling apart. Listings were canceling. Appointments were not getting converted. Oh my God, this is terrible. I'm not built for this. And I was devastated. I went into the weekend. I probably sat on my coach and moped the whole weekend. And then the next week, sold the house, sold another house, signed a listing, and my emotions were sky high. So I went from the most terrible state in the world to the best state in the world within a week. And I didn't change the city I was living in. I didn't change the house I was living in. I didn't change the car I was driving. Literally nothing changed. And I believe firmly, week one, my life is horrible. Week two, my life is amazing. Um, perception is very interesting. And a lot of the thoughts that go through our minds are not real. They're just our perception. Well, that's the thing. What we believe at that time. So why not plug into someone else's perception that is more more evolved than us? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like exactly what you said. There can be the opposite, right? Like if if you do believe the world is crashing down, then it will be, and you'll feel like your world is crashing down, and then naturally you'll attract negative things because that's how you're thinking. Um, like this is something that's said by a lot of leaders in my life, like everything that happens to you is your fault, right? I love that. Whether you think it or not, like everything is your fault. And you have to realize that either things are, you can have those two frames of mind. It's like, are, are things happening to you or are they happening for you? And I know we've discussed this before, but it's such a good message because you get to look at, okay, so, you know, you're $30,000 in debt or whatever it is. You can focus on the fact that you're in debt and like, you know, wallow in your pity and be like, oh my gosh, like this sucks and blah, blah, blah. Or you can say, okay, well, I have this debt because I'm building this amazing business. And as a result of it, I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to get X amount of clients. And now things are happening for you, not to you. Um, yeah, I love that. Can I tell a story about one of our friends? Yeah. Let's you do don't it. mind if I share his name. I don't think Sam Kwan. Yeah. One of my favorite people, like he's one of my five people. Um, when I met him, he was in debt. I have no idea what the amount was, but I remember we sat down and we tried to come up with a plan to get him out of debt. All his debt was on the credit card. We moved it to a line of credit where the interest wasn't as high. Um, and he went to work selling homes and he built his business in the city I'm in right now. And then he moved to your city and rebuilt his business. And today, a lot of the realtors on my team, it's almost like he's a legend in our office. People always ask, how do I do what Sam did? How do I achieve what Sam achieved? Cool, Mike, you built your business once. This animal built it twice and paid off all this debt. Um, when I was at the John Maxwell speech last month in um, Florida, he, he said something that really stuck with me. And I'll read it to you. It applies to Sam. Um, I want to do what you do. Do you want to do what I did? If you don't do the did, you don't get to do the do. The did gets you to the do. If you don't do the did, you are just in deep doo-doo. John Maxwell. 
That's like a Dr. Seuss poem, but I love that. Everyone wants to be where Sam Kwan is today. Who is willing to go walk his journey, be in debt, make the calls at the re relentless level that he did? I don't see anyone in my world willing to do that. No. So yeah, you want to be where he is today. But are you willing to do the did? Mm -hmm. Less than 1% of people would be willing to do that. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good message. Anything else? <laughs> well, I mean, we have a lot of resources. Maybe we can point some people to some resources. Um, if you go to our website, www.salesbeast.ca, we've got lots of resources for you to learn. You can keep updated with all of our past episodes and future episodes if you were subscribed to our mailing list. And we have some exciting stuff coming up in the future. So we'd love for you to stay in tune with what we've been building over the past couple of years. Good? Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm hustling. Every day I'm